Welcome to the studio. Artist Doug Pexa here. Before I start painting, I want to just go over a little something. Uh, mineral spirits and turpentines. So, I always use a quality turpenoid of sorts. Uh, the one I'm using currently is the uh, Gamasol. It is a 100% pure or odorless mineral spirit. There's always a little smell, but whatever. Um, this is a great way to thin out your paints and clean your brushes. I mostly use this. Also want to say, do not use that hardware store turpentine, that really stinky stuff. That is nasty and the fumes are bad for you and uh, you can cause a lot of problems uh, respiratory wise, especially if you're doing it in a small space. Don't use that, use something like one of these odorless things. Uh, this is a little more expensive, but it is well worth the effort. And I'll show you how to conserve this stuff in a moment. The other thing I use is a non-toxic. This is a little thicker. Uh, it's a terpenoid natural. Non-toxic, non-flammable flammable oil paint cleaner. Uh, and it also conditions your brushes. It's great. You can use this. It's better uh, to use uh, in junction or in spite of linseed oil because it's going to act a little bit like linseed oil, but will also clean your brushes. Um, I don't have anything with me right now. Um, that's another alternative, but uh, walnut oil, that's quite expensive. That also can clean your brushes too. Again, it is expensive, and I'll maybe talk about that at some other point. Uh, this does have a smell to it, but it's, again, non-toxic. So this is really good stuff. So how can you conserve your uh, terpenoids? I use mine in forever and ever. Um, but the key is, you have a couple jars. I always swap my turpenoids. You can see it's dirty and crappy in there. That's all dried stuff. That doesn't matter. So what I do is, after a paint session, I close up my other turpenoid, and there's sediment on the bottom, but it is all clear floating. So I carefully carefully pour it into another jar until the crap on the bottom starts coming up and then I only waste just a little bit and I'll actually go back and forth I'll spin this stuff around next time um, with the dirty stuff I'll pour that back in here keep this clean for uh, painting just keep going back and forth and you'll be surprised how long uh, your turpentine lasts. So that's what I do. Uh, always keep these things closed also uh, when you're not using them. That is my basic primer. Let's paint some leaves. Uh, I had started one on here uh, a couple days ago and got distracted and it didn't go anywhere so I'm gonna do something else. Uh, I, I got these really crinkly leaves here that I might want to play around with. And I'm just going to use the natural light. Let's see, they're kind of crinkly and I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but uh, or maybe I'll go out into the yard and see if I can find some new stuff. But that's where, where I'm going to start today. Went out into the backyard and I found for my horse chestnut tree, some nice, nice leaves. I'm going to, I don't know exactly, yeah. I want to see if I can, I'm gonna crop this guy in pretty tight, I think. And I kinda like this angle. Not exactly seeing, I want distance between here and there. Brightness and darkness and some shadow darkness to to see if I can really get the sky to flow. So let's get going.
Next episode, uh, I will be working on a series of uh, mushroom paintings. I have been asked to uh, do four mushroom paintings, four funky mushroom paintings uh, for a friend, and uh, we will see what happens with that. And I am excited because I get some ideas, but I don't quite know where it's going yet. So stick around like if you so desire hit that subscribe button and all that other stuff i really appreciate it it does help me out